to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Welcome in, welcome back. Monday, November 30th, and the Megalodon was six weeks ago. <laughs> oh, in NFL time, yeah. And here we are. It's Monday morning, uh, fresh off of a Thanksgiving holiday. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you at the FF Ballers on Twitter, if you want to follow us over there. It has been wild, gentlemen. Wild. Yeah, to say the least. I, I I don't remember ever. I mean, obviously, this was a week in the NFL like we haven't had in a long time because not only did you have all sorts of weird injuries, but you had all the COVID worries and the changing games. But the fact that we had a Megalodon show and our show was on a Wednesday, the amount of years that were between Thursday and this show is absolutely insane. And by the time football kicked off on Sunday, I had I had no idea <laughs> anything that was happening in the NFL. <laughs> That's how it felt. This week was absolutely insane. Uh, starting with, uh, what, Kendall Hinton, the newest uh, oh, quarterback man. for the Denver Broncos. Uh, Sometimes you put a cheat code in at the wide receiver position, uh, but you, you miss a couple – up down arrows you miss the a oh, b yeah. you, you get him in backwards and, yeah, get, and it, the code nothing. doesn't work <laughs> go back to the uh, checkpoint no it Kendall Hinton did not work out he looked like uh we we kept saying it was like if we were out there trying to throw a pass you know it was he completed one pass uh, Noah Fant led the team one reception and that was it for the entire game so it, it's amazing in hindsight, it seems like the best strategy for that offense would have been to just snap the ball to a running back and run every play because they didn't complete any passes. So, uh, and it felt I felt real bad for him. On one hand, he's got a story to tell. Uh, probably didn't think he was going to start a game as the quarterback for the Denver Broncos in his in his life. Probably not. I mean, probably maybe, not. Maybe he thought about it. I don't know. He he has such a great story for future Thanksgivings to tell his children and grandchildren. With yeah. such a bad ending. It's so like, get, gather around, <laughs> kids. Let me tell you about the time. Really? Really, Grandpa? You started. I started a quarterback. Really? How'd you do? I sucked. I, I threw started. the ball like 10 times. <laughs> and how small was he? I couldn't believe how little he was. Well, yeah. anyways. I was thinking just, about that, too. And then I just looked it up. And he's six foot. 195 so no he's not six foot i'm just that that was the 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 quick recovery from google so if that's what he is i mean i 195 I am, every bit i'm of, very small because, yeah because yeah. me and kendall i mean exact same shred of physique as well you know what he walked away from the game in one piece he did so that was that was the key but so much happened we're going to reflect on studs and duds on the show mm. today get into the news but first we must get sophisticated yes. and uh elegant Mm. Mike, why don't you take this one? Oh, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs> oh, it was Enzonio Gibson. Oh, he spent so much time in the end zone. How about Ezekiel Elisit? <laughs> How about just this? Eek! Eek! You have cassette player lamb. <laughs> uh, you've got Ty Fleek Hill. Oh, yes, as the kids would say, or... Tyreek Mountain. <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> Alvin Scamera. Mm. Will Fullest. Oh, yes. Oh, and this for us, Siler Murray. Mm. Oh. oh, great. I'll, I'll go ahead and take this one. <laughs> Derek Car Crash. Mm, steaming pile of garbage. <laughs> Streaming pile of garbage. Derek Carcass. Oh. Uh, on a brighter note, you have Rob Wee Anderson. <laughs> Rodrigo Sunken Ship? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, he wasn't good, but you know who was good? Who's bigger, Rodrigo Young or... Woo! 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 Uh, and Michael Sittman Jr. Mm. Oh, that one's just mm. sitting right yes. there for you. Mm. Yes, yes. I was just... When you brought up Rodrigo, I was thinking, who wins in a fight? Uh, Kendall... 
Hinton or Rodrigo Blankenship. <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, at least Rodrigo can't get poked in the eye. Oh, my goodness. All right. The fantasyfootballers.com for all the rankings, start, sit, tool, player profiles. Sincere thank you to everybody supporting the show over at jointhefoot.com. Indeed. Uh, it, it has been a, a bewildering, strange, unpredictable. Like our whole entire job is prognostication and predicting the future. And 2020's entire job is to make you wrong about that. So it's been a wild year where we've been reacting to so much, and yet you guys have been here. You've played fantasy. You've listened. You've supported the show. And uh, we're just thankful that we get to bring a little bit of normalcy into a weird year. Let's get into the Rewind. Weekly Rewind. All right, uh, let's get into it. We still don't know if we're going to have a Tuesday night football.com football game. Lamar Jackson's positive. Mark Andrews, Mark Ingram, J.K. Dobbins, Willie Sneed, all positive for COVID, all out this week. It is still scheduled as of this recording for 8 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday night football.com. Uh, James Conner also tested positive in that game, and we are just reacting to news. Uh, the, the NFL really wants this game to take place. The Steelers have already lost a game. They don't want to uh, push this into week 18, but they might not have a choice. So we're, you know. Yeah, the latest the latest that I've heard is that they did cancel practice today um, and that they're not entirely sure about travel. So, I mean, you know, the NFL is desperately wanting this to happen because this can continue a normal season schedule on pace uh, with a beginning and end time and playoffs on time and all that, any any pushback of this game and and everything gets blown up. So they've they've said things like it's not going to be canceled unless there is a proven new outbreak, you know, versus just another positive test. They feel like they're at the end of this, but at the same time, if you cancel practice this morning, it's it's not a good sign. Absolutely, yeah, that would be the Ravens' practice that got canceled, and uh, there is always. You know, we don't have the report yet, but on Monday, you generally are getting positive test results from some players as well. So that this will be par for the course the rest of the season. They're, they're going to deal with this. The country's dealing with it. And uh, I think the best recipe, look, you take fantasy seriously. You're trying to win. Uh, you know, we're down at the studio and when a team, our team is not performing, uh, that person's not talking a lot. They're not very happy. <laughs> Sometimes they leave at halftime in the second game. Uh, but I think you're talking about me. I think I was yesterday, but it was me two weeks ago. So, uh, but the point is, is look, you, you're not going to control this. If your team loses a player, they lose a player. Uh, it's just going to be the case. And so adding depth, we're going to try to help you on the waiver show tomorrow. Adding depth to your team is going to be huge. I mean, injuries are already a problem. Mike yesterday in, in like oh, a baby. Five minute stretch seemed to lose three players on his fantasy team with DJ Moore and Daniel Jones and uh I think Dalvin it Cook looked, went out yeah, at it looked that time. Like Dalvin Cook. So and you were thinking about your bench and who's gonna play next week, and that's what we're trying to prepare you for. So uh we're all reacting together and we're gonna give you the best advice we have. Uh and uh it's not gonna be Kendall Hinton for the future, I'll tell you that. Nope. Jonathan Taylor placed on the COVID list, did not play this week. John Worth. Brown entered reserve. Were you gonna say something, Jay? Yeah, I was going to say it's worth noting that Jonathan Taylor's a close contact. He was not a positive case, so he could be back this week. And then uh, Tua didn't play. McCaffrey, Thielen, Julio, Gurley also didn't play. That was a bit of a surprise. Yeah, um, it was. And they won handily without Jones and Gurley. Eckler came back this week. Raheem oh, Mostert came man, back. Man, did he come back. Austin Eckler just gobbling, gobbling up, up the targets from Justin Herbert. It was kind of ironic that Eckler came back, and this was the first game where where it kind of Herbert disappointed fantasy players, and it was just coincidence. Like if you watch this game, I don't. I, Jason and I both reacted to Austin Eckler. We didn't think he looked a hundred percent, but he must have felt a hundred percent because he stayed out on the field, right? Well, mm -hmm. and they didn't really have another good choice with Kalen Balage out. You knew he was going to get the full workload by the time Sunday morning rolled around. But yeah, he did. there were a couple a couple of plays where he'd get to the outside and you'd just be waiting to see that Austin Eckler burst and it wasn't there. But I assume it's coming. He seemed to get through the game without re-aggravating the injury. So it's, it's you know, full steam ahead for awesome, excellent. 
Uh, Derek Carr stole the headlines for his uh, destruction of fantasy teams that streamed. He stole him. a lot of things this weekend. Souls was, mostly. <laughs> souls, yeah. I, it was so. L- listen, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm banning the drop. The drop's oh, not, no! The, the drop is banned for the remainder of the, the, this season and maybe beyond. We'll see how he reacts to this. I like I, that drop. The drop's outstanding, Mike, but you know what? It wasn't outstanding for fantasy players this week. 55 and a half point over under. The Atlanta defense given up top 10 performances, and he goes out and just defies all logic. You yeah. had more fantasy points this week, Andy. Thank you. Brooks did too. Yeah. Uh, Josh Jacobs, uh, what I was saying is Carr stole the headline, but Josh Jacobs had a bad game, suffered an ankle sprain, left early. Uh, report this morning is he's having more tests. It sounds like it looked worse than it is. Jacobs has not missed a game this year, so we do need to follow that into the week. It could make Devontae Booker a pickup for yep. your team. It could. DJ Moore, non-contact ankle injury. Mm. Mike, this was tough for you to watch. I yeah, know, this, one all was, of us. this one was uh, – it, it per- like, but yeah, personally brutal. Of DJ Moore has been one of my dudes this this year. He's been coming through, and looked like he was about to, you know, take his you know mediocre day into a oh, all right, that's a good fantasy day. As he got an end zone target that was horrific. He was wide thrown. open, wide open, horrifically thrown by Teddy Bridgewater, and DJ Moore had to do some acrobatics to try and turn his body and get back to it. Ends up landing awkwardly. And an ankle injury is the official uh, status from the team. We don't know if that we, – we don't know the extent yet. And even to make things worse for fantasy, not not for DJ Moore, but Panthers heading into a bye week. So I don't even know if we'll get an update on DJ Moore for a while. There is some concern about Achilles. There is not a report about that. So we'll see if it's ankle sprain or something of that or nature. Or a calf injury. Just, yeah. I, I can't imagine at this point you – do not – do not plan to have DJ Moore in week 14. Well, yeah, whenever you are carried off with a non-contact injury, it's usually not good, and you're going to miss at least a couple of weeks. Yes, and so that, that might bring Curtis Samuel up on tomorrow's show again and through Absolutely. the week. Uh, Daniel Jones exited with a hamstring injury. He's getting an MRI. The Giants expect him to miss time. And uh, frankly, this is... Uh, not good news for any pass catcher you might have been hoping to use. Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton, uh, Cole Ingram, McCoy did man. not. Cole McCoy did not look good. I mean, no. It, Ingram finally had that breakout game over a hundred yards yesterday. The Giants, uh, if I am not mistaken, at least at this point, the Giants are leading the division now, and they will be without their starting quarterback. Rough. And then Philip Lindsay exited with a knee injury. He was actually the starting quarterback, technically. He was the first snap at the quarterback was he? position. He was. <laughs> and uh, he looked like he could uh, run it all right. And Chris Carson, he's supposed to return tonight. And then what are you hearing about Jalen Hurts rumors? Well, he got a bunch of first – well, I shouldn't say a bunch of. We, all, the report was basically that he was getting some first-team reps in practice ahead and that they are expecting to uh, – see an increased playing time for him at the quarterback position i mean who knows this could be smoke this could be it's very um, bizarre i you know i think what it is is it's basically the um the last chance it's flashing a light into you know carson wentz's eyes to see if they're gonna dilate or not until are you here are are you with us because we're yeah, gonna put well him said. in we're we're gonna we're look look he's taking a first team rep he'll get in if you keep sucking so uh expect to see him soon yeah, I mean it, it. It makes the you know streaming Carson Wentz discussions very doubtful. The NFC, the NFC East, which is so bad. You just brought up that the yeah. leader now has a backup quarterback. The Cowboys have their backup quarterback. Alex yes. Smith was a backup quarterback. If Jalen Hurts, Alex can Smith com- was a third string quarterback. At the yes, beginning a of the backup year. to the backup. If Jalen Hurts can complete it, and the <laughs> NFC East can have entirely backup quarterbacks, that's that's what that division deserves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, ridiculous. And the Lions fired Matt Patricia and their general manager, and the former Lions players all rejoiced with this. They did. Uh, Kenny Galladay. Social- Ugh. Eric Ebron was like about time or something. No, I mean, nobody liked him. He's yeah, the opposite uh, of a player's coach. Darius Slay was like, oh, I thought I was the problem. I mean, it he, was. I've never seen that 
type of a social media outpouring from players and former players. So the former Gimli and my axe jokes, he finally got the axe. Is that what happened? Yes, he did. Okay. All right. Let's get into the studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Oh, is it not fun to watch Patrick Mahomes play football? He threw up a 462 and three. Oh, casual. Sidearm casual, 462 and three. Absurd. It was like 400 in the first half. I, I mean, if they, if they needed him, he could have done more. That was first, a lot of fun. First player in NFL history with at least 30 completions and 300 passing yards in four consecutive games. It is Sounds delightful. Right. It yep. is delightful. Uh, Deshaun Watson, Kirk Cousins, oh, Aaron oh. Rodgers, Tom Brady, big games. Yeah, I mean, Deshaun Watson, absolutely nuclear now that uh, Bill O'Brien is out of the picture. The question will be for him, those fantasy playoffs, man, Chicago and the Colts, I mean, the Cincinnati Bengals, that, that's a delightful championship week matchup, but Chicago and Indy, that's it's tough. I know that they got beat this week, but overall, those, those are on the want. road too. Those are tough. Those are not who you would prefer your quarterback to be playing, but at this point, uh, how can you, it's, it's how can you doubt Watson? Yeah, it's really tough to bench him. I mean, you know, you look at Aaron Rodgers last night against Chicago. He was he was just fine with his four touchdown passes. Made it look very easy. Uh, so yeah, that'll be really hard to decide whether you're going to bench him or not. You almost hope for horrific weather in that Chicago game to to make the decision easier for you. I mean, Kirk Cousins had another nice game. I mean, three hundred and seven and three. He looked great. Didn't have Adam yep. Thielen, and yet uh, and didn't have a great game from Cook, and yet got it done. So. It might have been part of it, you know, Cook's injury, forcing them to, you know, they were down 21 to 10 in that game. And then Tom Brady put together, you know, a better fantasy week than probably what he put together on film. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so difficult with Brady because he has all of these weapons and, and you know Bruce Arians is, regardless of the downfield success of Tom Brady, he's going to keep taking the shots. And he did have some success in this game. couple to Gronk, one to Evans. Um, one to Godwin. So, uh, you know, Minnesota, Atlanta, Detroit, he's going to be a white knuckle fantasy playoff starter. <laughs> that's that, that right. Apt. Yeah, he is, but he's just, he really hasn't looked good. I mean, he had a good fantasy game, but if you watch the film, he, he, he doesn't look in sync. He doesn't look that good. And I mean, you, you want to talk about 345 yards from Tom Brady that looked as bad as it gets and 211 from Aaron Rodgers, it looked as good as it gets. It, it, it'll 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 be white knuckle indeed if you end up having to start him, and that's the decision Andy, you and I are going to have to make with Josh Allen and and Tom Brady heading into these playoff weeks. There, and and speaking specifically of that week fourteen, I know Allen has Pittsburgh, and I can tell you right now, I cannot imagine playing Josh Allen. I'm going to play mm -mm. Tom Brady and just hope and pray that the goat can. Get it done. So <laughs> uh, it's going to be tough. Before before we talk about the running back studs this week, and there were many, let's go ahead and thank today's sponsors keeping this show going. And that means a longtime wonderful sponsor of the show, uh, a company we used before they were a sponsor of the show, and that is Simply Safe Home Security. And get this, this is the time, a huge holiday sale, 40% off any Simply Safe system and a free security camera. I can probably hear Brooks just kind of wincing because he just bought this like a month ago, and now it's the <laughs> holidays. 40% off. Yeah, but uh, th this is the time of year when Brooks just has stockpiles of gold inside of his right. safe. And, and that's he, why he and needs simply it. Simply safe is making yeah. sure that no one comes in and snatches it. I don't know why he has more gold at Christmas. He just does. U.S. News holidays. and World Report called it the best home security of 2020. And uh, it keeps Brooks's gold nice and safe. <laughs> Arsenal of sensors, cameras. Uh, it used to be jewels and gems, but he's gone almost fully gold now. Is that right? Well, like I said, it's, it's Christmas time. This is when he celebrates his gold. We've got it on the, at the studio. We've had it since day one, uh, since we moved in there. High quality equipment, easy to hook up, no contracts, super easy, 40% off Simply Safe, plus a free security camera today by going to simplysafe.com slash footballers. Go right now. That is simplysafe.com slash footballers, simplysafe.com slash footballers. Enjoy. And we want to thank longtime supporter of this podcast, Manscaped. The holidays are here. Have you made your wish list? 
Look, Manscaped makes a fantastic gift. You got to check it out. They are the best in, in, in body hair trimmers. They take care of your nose hairs. They take care of your ear hairs. Bro, I made... I made a huge mistake this morning. I pulled the nose hair out while I was oh, sitting. Oh, come on, man. I, I have the trimmers like 10 feet away from me. I pull one lazy. out. I, I sneezed for like 40 minutes. It was <laughs> the dumbest laziness. decision of my life. Yeah. The, and the, check this out. The Manscaped Performance Package is the best value that Manscaped has to offer. Makes uh, the perfect gift. And, and included in this new package, the Weed Whacker, which is the ear and nose hair trimmer that Andy was just too lazy to use. I, 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 it's great. It's perfect. It always works, too. I'm dumb. The Lawnmower 3.0 Body Hair Trimmer. Uh, and if you get the performance package now, you can receive two free gifts, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. Manscaped has supported this podcast for a long time. We, uh, I am a proud user of the Manscaped products. Like I said, if you got hair anywhere, they, they take care of you. And get 20% off and free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code FOOTBALLERS. What are you waiting for? Make Santa proud. <laughs> there you go. Running back studs. Derrick Henry uh, went full Yeti. Uh, three touchdowns, 178 it, yards. The, the the transformation is complete. <laughs> I hide everybody because the Yeti is about to rain destruction upon all. He had 30 fantasy points by halftime. He was uh, Indianapolis didn't have DeForest Buckner in this game, and and you could tell this was this was a great game from Derrick Henry. This was. Why I tried to trade for him everywhere oh. and failed. Uh, it's going to be rough, man. <laughs> the, going into a fantasy playoff, looking at Derrick Henry on the other side. Oh, man. <laughs> the, the we Jacksonville, the Detroit, Jacksonville, Detroit, Green Bay. If I had to pick, <laughs> Green Bay. If I had to pick three teams for Derrick Henry to play for me, <gasps> those would be the three teams I'd pick. Oh, my gosh. We Detroit and Green Bay. In our league of record, uh, the manager with Derrick Henry oh. um, is right on the cusp of missing the playoffs. If he doesn't get like 12.9 fantasy points from Dallas Goddard tonight, then he's out. And we're all rooting for it. Oh, we are rooting against we him. We do not want Derrick Henry in them playoffs. Over the last five games, Derrick Henry, I mean, over the whole season, he's been great. He's been great over the last five games. Do you want to know who has more fantasy points in their last five games at the running back position than Derrick Henry? Yeah. Tr trick question. Antonio Gibson. Oh, baby. It's not a trick question. It is Antonio Gibbs season, and we're all celebrating. Woo! <laughs> None more than my Oh, my uh, goodness. This is the definition of a fantasy MVP. You, you knew that this was going to be a process for Gibson. In Washington, and yet this is the time of year, right? What better time than now to have uh, potentially stolen a top five, top ten running back in the late rounds if you got him early, if you drafted early, or in the middle rounds if you waited? And uh, 20 for 115 and three, it unbelievable. Is, it has been an unbelievable season for the rookie uh, the best part for Antonio Gibbs season, uh, Gibbs season, <laughs> Antonio Gibson <laughs> moving forward is. We have not scratched the ceiling for what Antonio Gibson could become for, for fantasy. We don't know that it will happen, but the pass catching, I mean, that game, uh, that Thanksgiving game where Gibson was snagging terrible throws off of the ground just proved how good his hands are. And then you have the burst plays. You have He's got the speed that he could take it to the house if, if, the, if the lane clears up. Man, I love Antonio Gibson. He's the running back five on the season right now in half point PPR. Oh, baby. Yes. Latavius Murray had oh. a I we'll we'll do a separate full podcast for you, Mike. We'll do a full Antonio Gibson. Maybe just release a new feed, just one <laughs> one one episode a day, <laughs> two hours a day. Uh Latavius Murray at Denver, nineteen for one twenty four and two. I think uh I mean when I when I see this stat line from Latavius I know Jason played him in Dynasty. He had no choice, and it ended up winning him a week. But there are players right now. Alvin Kamara is going to come up, and mm -hmm. then you have what Zeke is doing, and you're looking at these kind of stalwarts of the space, and you're saying, what's happening? I mean, uh, we did mention last week that he's out snapping Kamara. We don't know if the Kamara injury is playing a part. Obviously, Taysom Hill not throwing Kamara the ball is playing a part. But Murray, 30 snaps. This is a team that can run the football. How do you look at Latavius moving forward? I, I think you look at him 
as someone that I, I think you can start him. We yes. I mentioned him on this this last week, uh, at least only while Taysom Hill is the quarterback. Obviously, when Drew Brees comes back and the short passing game to the running back, that that's when they're going to have Alvin Kamara on the field more and utilized in in the right way. And and Kamara is obviously excellent. I don't think you're going to bench Kamara. He still looks good on the ground, but I think this is more about um, you know Latavius Murray's involvement while. I mean, 19 carries after, you know, having 14 opportunities the week before. He's just involved enough where he's a, a flex option. All right. Nick Chubb, he's good. He's ridiculous. Yeah, he's he's incredible. Chain mover, 19 for 144 and 1. Plays Baltimore, the Giants, the Jets, and the playoffs. So I don't care. Get through Baltimore, yeah. which isn't as hard as it has been. And uh, he leads the NFL in 20-plus yard runs despite missing, like, uh, I don't know, five weeks. So, <laughs> James Robinson. Is this the true fantasy football MVP right now? Off uh, of waivers or, yeah. or mean, last pick in the draft? And yeah. Unbelievable. He, he's he's definitely the – I imagine when the, when the footies roll around that this will be a clean sweep for waiver wire hero for James Robinson. I, I, he was drafted – in a few leagues as all that news was uh, shaking around with the release of Leonard Fournette, people taking their chance on on who it's going to be. But his, his stranglehold on the running back share is unlike anything we have ever seen. A, a, a tweet from good friend of the show, J.G. Zacharyson, James Robinson has 194 attempts this year, while other Jacksonville running backs have combined for seven rushing attempts. <laughs> like, that's that up. is... that That's... That's beyond like that's Christian McCaffrey uh -huh. levels, and and it's and he's great. Like James Robinson just gets it done. He has that balance and power where he he very rarely goes down on first contact. Yeah, I mean when you think about the rookie running back expectations, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Jonathan Taylor, and here's James Robinson, yeah. who is definitively. I mean Antonio Gibson's making a run at it for sure, but those two guys are the rookie stars at the position. Yeah, it's it's crazy because they are so clearly a cut above, and and he he's built for it too. He's two hundred and twenty pounds at, at only five nine. He's uh, I I think he's going to be their running back of the future too. Kenyon Drake twenty two for seventy eight and two should have had three. He's coming mm -hmm. on of late as should've well. Had three should have had three. Drake, yeah, jump, learn to jump. You don't need to burrow through the hole. Jump over the top. Come on, we know you listened to Criss Cross when you were growing up. We all did. Don't you <laughs> want to jump? make you jump. jump. <laughs> yeah. Uh, opportunity, 11 oh. for 103, six targets, five catches, and a touchdown. Best game of the year for David Montgomery. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, Green it, Bay sucks at rush defense. So he took advantage <laughs> of a matchup. He hadn't done that all season, uh, but he did take advantage of a matchup here. And going forward, Detroit, Houston, Minnesota Jacksonville it doesn't get much better as far as matchups. I, I know I, the matchup was good, but I will mention because we we do this, uh, they did mix up their offensive line. This is something that the M Montgomery truthers out there have been saying forever that it, he is a product of a just atrocious offensive line situation and they did mix it up last night and I know he, he had a good. 57 yard run, but he he was moving the pile and it the the disparity between the rushing production when he was out for a week and last week shows that he too he's got the stranglehold on that position which is mm -hmm. helpful and he's got Houston Minnesota Jacksonville in the playoffs so this could be he could be very useful let's put it that yes. way he might not win your game but he could be very useful and then Austin Eckler 16 targets 11 16 catches 16 targets what is this I didn't even realize that number was that high that is shocking <laughs> goodness great you know that was his career high in in touches yeah cuz Herbert in, knows in his what first he's game doing. Back? Yeah, Herbert says I will feed Keenan Allen and I will dump the ball off to Austin Eckler. This is you, the recipe. Do you worry at all about Keenan Allen's targets? He only had ten in this game. <laughs> I mean, that's they, pretty. They, uh, honestly, they they probably will dip a a bit, but Keenan Allen is still locked in. Yeah, yeah, impressive. Eckler is back. Atlanta, yes. Las Vegas, Denver in the playoffs. Nice to see him back out there. Wide receiver studs. I don't know. Tyreek Hill did some stuff. Oh, I, he, I, I, 
I don't remember the last time I was so excited to watch one player. Like I, I just wanted every ball to keep going to him. When I wanted a 500 yard game, and I love the the Twitter timeline after the first quarter. Every single person out there being like, he's on pace for an 800 yard game. Yeah, his it's, season pace: 448 receptions, 12,992 yards, 128 touchdowns. If he could have done that quarter every quarter all year long, ended with a mere <laughs> 13 for 269 and three. Uh, unbelievable. I mean, he yes. started the day with 752 rushing yards. He is now the first wide receiver to break a thousand on this season. So he also leads the NFL in touchdowns and it's like a cheat code. Yep. Will Fuller was the headliner at the wide receiver position before Tyreek Hill came and stole his award. But he, he only had 171 his, yards. Yeah. Pathetic. It's embarrassing. But he is, he's the wide receiver four on the season right now, heading into Monday night football. Six for 171 and two. This is what, uh, it's one of the reasons why before the year I went out and I actively got him in Dynasty Leagues because the chance at it, it wasn't mm -hmm. a guarantee. We didn't know if Will Fuller can stay healthy, but injuries are hard to predict. And if it was always, if he stayed healthy, he would be blank. And uh, he is now the wide receiver four. So they really can't afford to lose him. Like if, I, if I'm Deshaun Watson, I've thought Fuller is leaving for sure. I'm not sure anymore. Yeah. They, well, I think there's well, a chance least, they have to pay him. At least with the removal of Bill O'Brien, I would think that the new regime realizes in the in today's NFL, you have your quarterback locked up. You better lock up a, a number one guy. And I, I get that he's an injury risk, but you take Will Fuller off of this team and you're in trouble. Yeah. Jarvis Landry had a game, finally. Eight for what? 143 and one. Jarvis. I mean, look, Jarvis is a good wide receiver, and Baker has been playing in horrific weather every single week. It was the first chance, you know, post Odell Beckham. It was. That's that crazy. They have a, a an opportunity to actually throw the ball in not crazy weather. So, um, yeah, maybe Jarvis is someone that you might look to as more reliable than what you've seen over the last month or or two. Started in just 33% of Yahoo leagues. So, Makes sense. Uh, Allen Robinson had a game. 13 targets, 8 for 74 and 2. Nothing, you know, was no deep plays really, but they were just kind of keeping him in front with the big lead. Kept catching the, the ball. Got into the end zone twice. He's been great in spite of poo-poo quarterbacks for his entire <laughs> career. And uh, yeah. I would personally rather have Trubisky out there. All right. Because I feel like drives are going to be more sustained with yes. the occasional scramble for a first down, and a more sustained drive is a more, just more opportunities for touchdowns. Yeah, I, I actually agreed. As, as I was watching the game, it because we had that conversation last week. Would you rather have Fultz? Would you rather have Trubisky? And even with how bad Trubisky looked, so so many of those open passes uh where he's dumping it into the ground not even making it to the receiver giving them a chance to catch it uh he's he's not a he's not a franchise NFL quarterback but for fantasy I think I would rather have him out there for for uh, Robinson for the rest of the year all right I'm doing the gritty today Justin Jefferson 13 targets Woo! 7 for 70 and two more touchdowns I love this guy <laughs> I'm I'm such a big <laughs> fan and he he proved that he could be um you know, out there as the number one in this game, you know, Thielen's going to come back, but Jefferson is just too much big playability to put on your bench at any point. Mm -hmm. You have to play him no matter what. Agreed. Amari Cooper, six for one, 12 and one. Andy Dalton plus Amari Cooper is it works. working out. Yep. You you can play Cooper when Dalton's there. Debo, 11 for, yes. 130, 11 for 133. The man, Debo. Oh my gosh. I uh, love the 13 targets there. I, I feel like half of those are the handoff taps. Oh, they are. But it's weird because he can take the tap past 20 yards like every time. Debo uh, Samuel is a perfect fit for this offense. And yeah, and, and there's trust. I mean, if there's one thing that this wide receiver core hasn't had, it's depth or trust. You don't know who's going to get it. It's not going to be Bourne or Richie James. If Debo's out there, they're going to build the offense around him. And, and, and you want to know what else they haven't had is Ayuk uh, uh, and Debo yeah. together. Like, well, I, that's my curiosity because Ayuk was good when he was the only show in town, and Debo's been good while he's the only show in town. What is going to happen 
when both of these guys are out? Is the offense going to be that much better, or is it just going to be you're taking this great, you know, stat yeah. line and you're splitting it in two? You, you could be, but this this is what uh, – when I was talking about Debo last week, what I liked about him, that you, you knew the matchup sucked. The, the Los Angeles Rams, I don't want my wide receivers playing against the Rams because it's hard to get open. Debo Samuel doesn't have to get open because he starts to play open, and that's where they give him the ball. Yeah, he, he's not a traditional wide receiver. They facilitate right. touches to him. And, uh, you know, I don't think I'd be willing to play Ayuk with Debo there, but I'm willing to play Debo with Ayuk there as of right now. Mike Evans, three for 50 and two touchdowns. Took him nine targets. <laughs> yeah, nine targets, that's man. That's rough. It's really hard to kind of uh, decide on those three guys, but Evans seems like he is secured uh, as the number one, and you kind of have to decide between Brown and Godwin, and yesterday was Godwin for sure. Uh, tight ends, Robert Tunyon, five targets, five for 50, or 67 and a touchdown. Evan Ingram, 100-yard game. Rob Gronkowski, 100-yard game. And, uh, oh, Travis Kelsey, just another eight for 82. Yeah. Tunyon's that, pretty – two solid games in a row. Uh, Tunyon is, I mean, of that tier of quarterback at that point, it's what do you want? Well, I would like a, a pass-friendly offense and a Hall of Fame quarterback. So, yeah, I mean, it's the same thing for, for Gronk, where Robert Tunyon is in play. Evan Ingram, it's – man, again, it's, it's so disappointing to see Daniel Jones – have to miss time. Now, the latest report is that they're hoping it's only a week, but the the Giants still won't know that un until they know. But uh, against Seattle, Evan Ingram, uh, upsetting. And uh, Jason, do you have confidence in Gronkowski moving forward after seeing him do this week after week after oh, week? Oh, yeah, I, I think you have to. I mean, if you're talking about tight ends that you can have confidence in, he, he has to be near the top. He's had two bad games since week six that's phenomenal for a tight end uh, every other week he's he's basically been a tight end one all right uh let's talk stinkers stinkers of the week presented by odor eaters it doesn't get stinkier than than what we experienced with Derek Carr oh, I, I just man. I mean Gruden apologized to the entire fan base for what he, took place on the field. As you should have. Uh, this was three fumbles from Derek Carr against Atlanta. 215, no touchdowns, threw a pick. Don't send in the car. Pull the car over. Throw up. Sell the car. Set the car on fire. I don't <laughs> care what you want to do. Just don't ever send the car in again. It's so disheartening because this team – was sitting at six and four, could have gone to seven and four with a, you know, any type of performance against Atlanta, who's been so vulnerable in the passing game. There, sometimes it just doesn't go the way you think it's going to go. I mean, Derek Carr played about played three quarters, and then that's when he got pulled right around the fourth. Right, Nathan Peterman had more fantasy points, the backup quarterback, in one quarter of play, more points than Derek Carr. The Raiders have played to their competition. On a weekly yes. basis, they 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 get up for the big games. Kansas City's coming in, divisional opponent, Super Bowl champs, and and they get up for that game. And he throws two seventy five and three touchdowns. Looks like a, a, you know, should be on an MVP candidate list. They go and they think it's an easy matchup against Atlanta. They get boat raced six to forty three, and just just don't show up. And and they've done this a lot this season, where the whatever you think you're going to get out of the Raiders, you end up getting the opposite. Yeah, I Denver, he had a single-digit fantasy game against Denver in a matchup people were expecting him to do well in. And what happens next week when fantasy players are trying to find quarterback options and they see the Jets on the schedule, who are 29th against opposing fantasy quarterbacks? That's You're going to be tempted to, to look his way. I'm not because I want... <laughs> Uh, I never want to experience that feeling again. The, the pain that Andy must be experiencing right now, as as like the as one of the five Derek Carr supporters in the fantasy community, and this was the time, this was the the stage where all of us were bought in. Well, I look, I brought I'm up. Sorry. I, oh gosh. Yes. Yes. Oh, 
Oh, that was spectacular. Well done, Al. And uh, somehow still doesn't illustrate how much pain uh, that this brought me. I mean, I, I chased your stream, Mike. I made him start, and I, I, I was take, in, man. It wasn't I take, just you. Look, I take. I wasn't the only one either. The, this was a player that was uh, consensus top ten this week, and uh, it, it's one thing to have. Sometimes you know it doesn't go right, and you're like, well, he didn't sink my team. He sunk your team. Yes. You probably you needed Antonio Gibson or Tyree Kill or Derrick Henry to survive what Derek Carr did, and it sucks. Uh, Kyler Murray, first dud of the year. Uh, this is the first time he's been uh, not very good, and no, no touchdown passes, didn't run the football. You don't know if the shoulder caused them to, to change the game script a little bit where they didn't want to expose him, but super and, disappointing. And this coming week, you've got the Los Angeles Rams Really, really tough matchup. I wouldn't expect great things from Kyler this week. Jared Goff. Woof. Yeah, this was a bad performance and uh, makes two bad fantasy days with a great one mixed in. Cam Newton was. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I So I, bad. I, re I thought Cam Newton would have a good game. And I, what's crazy about the, the Newton stat line, I mean, under 100 passing yards, that's, yeah. We've seen that from Cam Newton. Nine for 46 on the ground. Not too bad. Cam Newton was vultured by a running back for, for his touchdowns. James White came through with two carries inside the 10 for two touchdowns. Ridiculous. And they won the football game. And, and they that, won. And that really hurts. All right, running backs. What do we do with Alvin Kamara right now, guys? 11 for 54 on the ground. Two targets. One catch for negative two yards. That makes one catch in the last two weeks. Man. Uh I, I've seen people, let me put it this way. I've seen people reaching out and saying, look, I can trade Kamara right now for DK Metcalf straight up. I could, I can trade him for that tier of wide receiver. I, they want out. They feel like they don't have what they've had and they won't get it in the Taysom Hill era. But I stare at the fantasy playoffs. I see Philadelphia, Kansas city, Minnesota. And I think about Drew Brees coming back so and I don't feel like I'd make that trade. But Drew Brees, I think the earliest he'll get back is week 15 Correct. was kind of what they were saying. So you're hoping he's back for the second week of the playoffs. That's true. And you're hoping you made it there, um, you know, through tough competition in the playoffs. So, I, you know, this is obviously team dependent. You can't trade Alvin Kamara for DK Metcalf if, you know, that's going to leave you with um, mediocre running backs. If you've got great depth there then then I, I I might look to make that trade um I think Kamara is going to be phenomenal a world beater when Drew Brees is in the lineup and when Taysom Hill is in the lineup which is probably at least half of the rest of the games if not more um he's going to be mediocre what he's we just have not, not getting seen, the ball in the air it, what we haven't seen is Taysom Hill have to come back I mean, the, the game against Atlanta, twenty-four to nine. The game is against the Broncos with no quarterback, thirty-one to three. It's just been a commanding lead where Taysom Hill is set up for success, where he doesn't really have to throw. He can run. They can hand a, hand the ball off to Latavius Murray, uh, and we they get Atlanta next week, Philadelphia the following week. It's hard to imagine a world where the Saints are trailing in those games and they have to use Kamara more in the passing game. I, w I thought it would be an interesting conversation here. Just a, a real, uh, a side note for Alva Kamara, because this is the audition, right? This is the audition for Taysom Hill. We, uh, I expect Drew Brees to be done after this year. Where are you guys on Drew Brees retirement? Yeah, I think this is trending that way as well. It kind of reminds me of the end of Kurt Warner's career too, getting beat up in his final season. Brees has missed some time broken ribs it's up to 50 60 broken ribs at this point and uh i i think this is the swan song i think this is it i agree and this is Taysom hill auditioning to be the quarterback for this team what are you doing in dynasty i mean the, the, this team just uh, just opened the vault for alvin Kamara and michael thomas can you imagine Taysom hill as the starting quarterback for this team next year and you thought you had the number one wide receiver. You thought you had a top three, top five running back. Well, what do you do? Well, I the question here is, do you panic? And I, I don't know if I'm willing to panic on those players yet. Um, it's two games. It's hugely disappointing. But we've talked about, like, Camaro was questionable going into last week with the injury. We know the talent. 
and uh, so I'm not I'm not ready to panic in dynasty formats. But I I I think the case that Jason made about Breeze coming back week 15 at the earliest, you can't you got to stay water. You can't treat Alvin Kamara and maybe even Aaron Jones and maybe you know and obviously Zeke the same way you would when the season began. Right. <laughs> oh, Super Camario. The Goomba got him. Oh, man. Yeah. He's certainly not. If he's a, if he's out there, he's not. He doesn't have the mushroom. You know what I mean? No. He's, just, no, he's hanging he's... on by a thread. Regular size Mario. Yes. Yeah. All right. Zeke. Luigi Zeke, the Goomba got Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> man. What a terrible game for Zeke. And uh, I mean, I I haven't seen anyone talking about it on Twitter, so I, you have to. I imagine he's fine, but it's worth noting Zeke did tweak his ankle at the very end of that game. A Zeke tweak, a Zeke tweak, a little Zeke meek tweak. Is he gonna miss a week? D I don't know. Yeah. I doubt it. Not yeah, a week. I, I doubt it. I'm just saying it. You you need to be aware of what's going on. A one week tweak for Zeke. Yeah, maybe, maybe TP know. TP. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it would be interesting to see what what Pollard did with a full game. And they, and I, I did call Zeke invincible, so he'll probably play. And they did lose uh, Zach Martin for three to four weeks with a calf injury on the offensive yeah. line where that was like, two weeks ago where it looked like, okay, Zeke is kind of going to gonna be back because they figured some things out on the O-line. Well, they got to figure some things out again. Yeah. Josh Jacobs, seven for 27. This whole game, you know, you can kind of just throw it away. Uh, right. It was a disaster. He got hurt. Fancy playoffs, though. The Colts, that's a tough week one playoff matchup. And then the Chargers in Miami. Uh, Dalvin Cook went out with an injury, came Dalvin, back. Dalvin Cook is the new LaShawn McCoy, where he's incredible. Uh, their their game kind of reminds me. Uh, Dalvin Cook reminds me a bit of Shady McCoy. And it reminds me that every, I see Dalvin Cook go down to a season-ending injury at least once a game now. He's trying to get that to once a quarter recently. But... Uh, <laughs> Jason, what do you do with Aaron Jones right now? 17 for 90, 19 opportunities. Didn't do a lot in the, the passing game. Not a complete stinker of a game. But yeah, it's I, more being brought up because Jamal Williams was 17 for 73 in a touchdown. In the last few weeks, it's been looking yeah, like a timeshare. I, I think they're splitting these guys because they can. Um, you know, there was kind of some debate last night over, well, is this them wanting to rest Aaron Jones or is this just – look, Jamal Williams has been good and it's a one-two punch. And I think it's in between those two things. I think if they were in a position of need, they know who their better running back is. They they know it's Aaron Jones. Um, so it's one of those things where you look at the upcoming schedule, it's it's cake. Um, you know, it's, it's Detroit and Carolina and Philadelphia. Um, those should be games you're winning. And so you're probably expecting a one-two punch. But because they're easier matchups, you know, Aaron Jones can in the first half go off and have be the reason that the that the Green Bay Packers are up. So I think you just you just start Aaron Jones every single week. Yes. I, I don't think you've seen anything on on film to say um, you should be worried. And and if they need him, they will rely on him. That that I'm confident in. And he looks he just looks outstanding. Every run looks great. He just didn't get it done uh, to the he's just to not the scoring at home. He's just yep. not scoring. He's one touchdown in the last several weeks, and I think, I think it's they're they're having so much success passing the football in the red zone right now with Aaron Rodgers. Like that could be a part of it too. Good, but Jamal Williams should not be on your waiver wire. I'll say that you Jamal Williams should be a priority pickup tomorrow or All right. Wednesday. Bigger question marks here. You guys can weigh in. Clyde edwards alaire eleven for thirty-seven, just one target. And uh, it, this was Clyde Edwards nowhere. This was Clyde yes. Edwards, uh, where are you in the first half? Because Lev Bell was taking a ton of snaps. Mm -hmm. And your eyebrows kind of, one eyebrow goes up when you see him out there that much. It makes you wonder what the philosophy was to start this game because obviously it was not about Clyde. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, there, there's two arguments. One is the fact that Lev Bell was out there more than Clyde early and oh no, is, you know, is this going, Clyde has needed the volume to really be relevant. He hasn't been, you know, supremely efficient. He's, he's needed the volume to have great fantasy days because he hasn't been a touchdown machine on the season. But on the other hand, you go, well, I mean, Terry Kill had 200 and 
something yards in the first quarter and every drive was just over instant touchdown to Tyreek. Yeah, and then they're, you know, dominating and winning the game where, you know, you you don't really need them. So I, I don't know that you worry too much about Clyde Edwards-Alaire, but I mean, his ceiling just hasn't been there, you know, outside of one or two games the, the entire season. So he's just an RB2 to me. Yeah, Le'Veon Bell still only, with all the time he was on the field, that only turned into seven opportunities compared to 12 for, for Clyde. Clyde is still the, the person who will get the most volume, but that... Uh, I think the first half was that's just one of those frustrating things that comes with an Andy Reid running back. You you reap the rewards, but you got to live through other guys being on the field. Even when back in the the Jamal Charles heyday, I, mean, I remember being a fantasy manager screaming at Andy Reid, "Why is Jamal Charles not on the field right now?" All right, I'm getting a little bit uh, shaky about Kareem Hunt. This was his season low in opportunities uh, behind. Uh, in terms of running back opportunities, two two targets, no catches. You know, he he generally has been a player that is not going to overwhelm you with volume when Chubb is there, but finds a way, right? He scores a touchdown or he has a nice PPR day. Uh, where are you with Cream Hunt? Is this an RB2 rest of way? Is this a player that you, like, would you rather have uh, Cream Hunt or Kenyon Drake rest of the season? Mm, I I would take Kenyon Drake just because of the the known volume, but I'm I'm not bailing on Kareem Hunt just yet. But running back to flex type of player, it's the two targets that was that was pretty frustrating to see. But maybe that was just you you had the 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 kind of that breakout game from Jarvis Landry for the season. I think that those it's not a coincidence that that Landry went off, but Kareem wasn't getting targeted. All right, uh, Damian Harris, 14 for 47. I'm concerned, though, because you saw James White get a couple of uh, red zone opportunities here, which is kind of what the recipe was with Burkhead. Say, James White turned into Rex Burkhead. He did, and this is something where Damian Harris is going to have to be – it's just tough in a full PPR league to do a lot with Damian Harris, I guess is my point. That's true. Yep, that's fair. Yeah, he's had uh, you know quite a few games already this season now. And in his eight games played, he's got a total of eight targets. No, I'm sorry, four targets. Oh, so man. he is not utilizing that way. If he doesn't get in the end zone, you're going to be disappointed. J.D. McKissick uh, smooches himself, smooched away your flex position if you put him out there this week. One for Games. six on the ground. Game script. Yeah, two for 21. Even, yeah, yeah. Game script, that's true. I mean, they weren't playing catch up the whole game, but it, it was a competitive game, and it just seemed like they weren't utilizing him the same way. I think it was out there at, at some points of this game where you thought he'd get some targets, and he just didn't. Yep. Feels a little bit like the Naeem Hines kind of predictability, uh, where some games are just McKissick games and Hines games, and then sometimes they disappear, which is what makes me shaky about pass catching running backs all the time. And these two guys aren't helping me feel confident there. Yeah. And I, I do think that a different game script will, will change things and they, they might have McKissick out there re receiving more targets as it goes along, but it's not just game script. It, it, it is the fact that they have this rookie who can do that, that they want to get more involved. Uh, you know, Gibson had seven targets to McKissick's two. And as the season goes along, I think they want to have Gibson more involved in the pass game. They want to have that three down back like this coaching staff had in Carolina. Um, so, uh, you know, every every week is more, uh, you know, experience for Gibson, more knowledge in the, in the passing game, the protection game. And so whenever the opportunity allows that Gibson could be on the field, I, I, I think he will be. Brian Hill was hugely disappointing, filling in for Todd Gurley. Edo Smith had a better day, 12 for 65 and a touchdown. Also had five targets. I Moving feel like you can blame Derek Carr for this. Because the game was out of hand and yeah, you didn't. I, but like the, did Edo Smith earn some more playing time with a better performance? He may have, but Edo, Edo Smith came in when the, the, the game was out of hand and like both teams were already pulling starters at that point. Uh, do you you you'd play Hill over Smith then moving forward if Gurley's out again? Yes. Wide receiver, uh, stinky weeks. Michael Thomas four for fifty. DeAndre Hopkins five for fifty five. Which was uh, oh, which was a little. I mean, this is three out of four weeks. He's been the wide receiver thirty five or worse. 
Oh, gross. And you can't sit him. No, never. no, you cannot. No. So it is what it is. Uh, yeah. Stephon Diggs, 7 for 39. Disappointing week for him, too. This is what happens at wide receiver. Uh, Cooper Cup, after the huge week, 2 for 41. They were out of sync on offense. But Antonio Brown, 2 for 11. What do you do with Antonio Brown after this week? It seemed like his targets were going up. Was this just a bad week? Or uh, you know, did the team kind of make a concerted effort to focus more on Godwin? And, and Brown is not what they wanted. What do you think? I think there's three great targets, and there's not always enough to go around. Four if you include Gronk. And so it's one of those things where every single week one of these guys is going to disappoint. Um, they're going to the bye, so Would you, drop you don't him? have to worry about it. If I had to drop him, if I needed a roster spot, I think you could. But if he was on waivers, I would also pick him up. So I'm, he's not someone I'm looking to drop. All right, tight ends. Uh, is this the final... Goodbye for Johnny Smith. Zero targets, zero catches. Zero well, chance of being on your playoff roster? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's as Derrick Henry completes his metamorphosis. I mean, there's <laughs> there's not really there's, – there's no points for Johnny. Johnny's like, like, are you using that cocoon over there? I can – You ever tried – like, have you ever tried to share a meal with a Yeti? And like, hey, you're going you gonna to finish go that well. cookie, Mr. No, Yeti? No, that doesn't work. You have to be a tank in your own right if you want a yes, piece of you, this offense. AJ yes, Brown. You do. I mean, they they have the Derrick Henry <laughs> of wide receivers in AJ Brown and John U. Smith, who's like super athletic but not enough. They're like, yeah, just we got this. <laughs> Don't worry about this, John U. I think I'm moving on from John U. I think I'm moving on from Jared Cook right oh, now yeah. as well. You've got to find a different option. There are other uh, tight ends out there you can take your shot with. This past week, Kyle Rudolph would have been one of them. Uh, Darren Waller, disappointing game, whatever. You're playing Darren Waller moving forward. Mm -hmm. and then Jordan Reed, six targets, oh. but just two for 18. And uh, Ooh. Yeah, is this a perfectly played long con by Jason letting Mike sign him last week? <laughs> ah, got ya. <laughs> and no, I did I, play look, him. I, I played I, him over I, Austin Hooper. I believe, yeah, I did too in, a, in another league, that exact situation. I played him over Austin Hooper. So, you know, we, we take the advice we say and, and we don't always get it right. I, it was very disappointing because – you know, six targets, and a lot of them were not good even when he was wide open in the middle of the field. Yeah. Um, you know, going forward, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to believe that Jordan Reed's going to be a, a piece of the offense and as good an option as other crappy tight ends that are out there. Yeah, the, the, if you're taking any solace from it, take it from the six targets. N yep. not, many, not many tight ends receive six targets. All right, Stinkers of the Week presented, as always, by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. We also want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the podcast. Uh, they have a special auction right now for Black Friday week. It runs through December 3rd. And basically, uh, we sent an email out about this. They are doing a signed Babe Ruth baseball giveaway. And you just have to win an item on their Black Friday featured auction, and you're automatically entered to win a Babe Ruth baseball, which that is would be so cool. pretty cool. So uh, check that out at pristineauction.com, and when you sign up to bid, use the code BALLERS. You get a $10 credit by doing so. That is it. We'll have probably piles and piles of news heading into tomorrow's waivers show. So thank you for tuning in, for supporting the show and listening, and we'll be back with another episode tomorrow, guys. Enjoy the game. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. In Foot Clan, don't forget Simply Safe Home Security is having a huge holiday sale, 40% off any Simply Safe system and a free security camera. This is the whole arsenal of sensors and cameras to protect every inch of your home or Brooks's gold. You can set it up yourself in just about 30 minutes. Get 40% off Simply Safe plus a free security camera today by visiting simplysafe.com/footballers that's simplysafe.com/footballers.